right? A lot of work, but the nice thing is we're getting modular code and we're not polluting the global namespace. And you can read the API section of Require.js if you want to know more on why we, we might do this. Um, so, wait a second. I don't want to require, I want to define because um, because this is going to be its own module describe um, my lib test suite we'll say can't think of anything better and then we'll say it should I really should probably be using single quotes here I do the wrong thing often with those quotes I'm sorry okay here we go it should um, let's say we're going to add two ints because that was about the most simple thing I could think of for my little example lib. And before we actually test this for reals, we're going to force a failure, hopefully. Just to, at this point, we need to see if this whole thing is set up correctly or not. And just because it's bugging me, I'm going to... Um, Get my JS hint to stop complaining. Define is true. Um, we have a describe. So all this stuff is defined on the global. And I think this should take away some of those warnings. What did I do? Oh, I always stick a colon after global. That doesn't work that way. Okay, so define my lib is never used. That'll get fixed. They want us to use strict. Okay. I'm down with strict. Um, so you notice that it is no longer um, throwing a hint, JS hint error. Expect is not defined. Okay, I got to do expect. Expect is true. Okay. So what's this missing use strict? Oh, duh put it up there all right I can live with that <coughs> excuse me we're gonna use my lib in a second okay so let's go back and review we set up our index.html hopefully correctly we're first requiring the spec and then we kick off mocha and this guy's gonna do mocha run for us uh, we've got main set up correctly pointed to my lib my lib seems to be a valid uh, required JS module. Um, and then we have our spec, which is going to depend on my lib. And then my lib gets injected in here. So this callback will get called once my lib is ready and, and loaded into required JS. I'm pretty sure it just uses a you know a stack or a queue of, of, of these guys and it sucks in all the defines and requires and, and is smart enough to load them in order for us. In fact, that's uh, that's what it says on their page. Let's just go have a look. Uh, mechanics require JS loads. Each dependency is a script tag and it appends it to the head, right? It waits for all dependencies to load, then figures out the right order in which to call the functions that define the modules, then calls the module definition functions in the right order. Um, good enough for me. And so finally, I think I'm with trepidation ready to try to test this and see if I set this up correctly. Let's see. Yes, I did, because this is the failure I was expecting. Um, so if we go into our spec and then say expect true to equal true. We should have success, right? Okay, so now let's do the real test. A real test is well, we're gonna we're not gonna worry about before each and setting things up in a beautiful way. We're just going to say lib equals new uh, my lib. We magically have this now because require.js is injecting this module so nicely. And um, let's keep this real clear we'll say actual equals lib add we'll say when we add three and five um, we expect 
that actual will equal 8. Um, sorry, 2 equal 8. Now, something I found really cool with this BDD flavor of uh, chai is that I can actually put a message um, should correctly add to numbers. And I'm scrolling off the screen here a little bit. So I'm trying to keep my font size nice and big for you guys. Um, strings must be single quoted. I've got some strict uh, hinting going on in my environment. Okay, so now we're actually testing that this lib does something. Now you notice we don't have that there. So if we run yeoman test, it should sort of explode for us. And we said undefined is not a function evaluating lib add three, of five, three and five. Cool. So let's add that. We'll just say lib prototype add is a function that takes two numbers and returns the result of adding them. And I got to put a, a semicolon there. Okay, so now if we say yeoman test, cool, it looks like it's working. Let's just throw in something expect. Uh, let's just try one other guy. Um, one plus two does not um, not. Let's see if I can get this not to be not to equal. Well, it's not going to equal ninety nine. This is a useless test, but I just want to make sure my expectations are correct. Okay, All right so. Message undefined is not an object. I think I actually set that up incorrectly. Um, so lib add. Hmm. Missing parentheses. So what happened there is without this um, lib add, there's no not <laughs> on the result of that. Because that should that should be a number, right? We want to say expect, and then within expect, call lib add. Why am I getting missing semicolon not to equal? So now I've got extra stuff over here. Okay. So now this should fail. It should correctly fail. Oh, it didn't fail. Hmm. Lib add one and two, not to equal 99. So what happened there? Uh, da, 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 da. Didn't really want to go into a debugging session with you guys, but let's actually look at how you debug this. So another thing we can do is say yeoman server test dash d. That, the d part will like, give us verbose output and see that everything's getting loaded. And you can see scripts, my lib is loaded, my specs loaded. So it's not failing when we expect it to fail. So we can open up these tools. Um, and let's reload this. We set a breakpoint over here. And I think this is going to go into our library and add these two. So there's one and two. And then it's going to return the result of those two. And I think I'm probably... I'm probably doing this assertion incorrectly because lib add one and two is three. Okay, so it's something's wrong with the way I'm doing this not to equal guy. So it actually returned the assertion. Okay, let's head on over to our expect guy and see what Rob's doing to not be okay. Okay, so I got the two and the not backwards. All right, sorry, sorry. So this is why API documentation is so wonderful. Um, and by the way, I hunted around for where these expect assertions are. And don't go to expect.js because the chai.js stuff has sort of slightly normalized or modified the syntax, for example. 
here you can say OK as a property. In the expect take, expect JS uh, API documentation, that's actually a method call. So this is what you want, chai, JS, and go to their API documentation for BDD. And so you can actually verify this by just taking these and cutting and pasting them into um, your runner. And I've already done it. They all, well, I haven't done every single one, but these, these are definitely the good guys, as my friend Julian always said, the good ones. Okay, so now we're going to say to not equal 99. And we're going to rerun this. Actually, we should be able to just go back over here and reload this. So that's going to do what we expect. And that works. Okay, cool. Um, one more time, I'm going to run it. And what happens if I just take this whole line and stick it in the console? Well, oh, is that, the, is that what we added? To not to, to not equal? Yeah. Okay, well, that looks good. By the way, I'm just hitting the escape key here to open this up in case you're not familiar with Chrome tools. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. Let's go back and control C this guy and then run just the command line version. Gnome and test. And we're all green. Life is good. And our little incredible library is doing what we expect it to. So again, if you just want to go grab this stuff, I've got it up over here on my uh, githubs yeoman underscore require js just go to rob levin tennis and you'll find it and i uh, hope that was helpful i'm gonna <clears throat> try to answer some questions in the forums for people that were getting confused on this and um hopefully we'll get a little deeper into testing with mocha and chai and um and get get deeper into all that on the next one Hope you had a good one, and um, I'll see you next time.